Skidmore College wants to create a safe space for sensitive high school seniors. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America, visit areyouontrack.com to get in.com. Again, that's R you on track to get in.com at which you will complete a free three minute assessment. Your results will be emailed to you right away and they will help you clarify whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America. The news is first and foremost that Skidmore College up in Saratoga Springs, New York, which is a small liberal arts school that is popular with the private school set, but others are also increasingly interested in Skidmore, uh, and they have diversified their student population quite a bit in recent years. Uh, Skidmore has announced that for the 24-25 admissions cycle, early decision one deadline that used to be November 15th is now November 1st. So that is rationalizing it or making it more standardized across the board with many other schools who have long held a November 1st early decision deadline. So it's about two weeks earlier than it used to be. The early decision two deadline over at Skidmore, as well as the regular decision deadline, which used to be January 15th, uh, is now January 8th, 2025, the 24-25 admission cycle. So that's the big sort of headline news, if you will, uh, out of Skidmore. But if you dig deeper into recent communications that Skidmore has shared with the college counseling community, you get a very clear sense that Skidmore is trying to frame all of their decision making from the perspective of doing what is in the best interest of the student and caring for the student and his or her well-being or their well-being. Uh, and it's very interesting that uh, Skidmore would uh, basically make their deadlines earlier uh, for very busy high school seniors uh, and frame it, of course, as being in the best interest of students. Though, again, I do understand from the perspective of students who generally assume that early decision deadlines are November 1st, now, now they can assume that is also true with Skidmore, whereas in previous years, Skidmore has sort of been out there doing its own thing with a November 15th deadline for early decision and a January 15th deadline for early decision two and regular decision. But the news goes on with Skidmore. Skidmore um, has also made note as follows uh, in their recent communication to counselors about their discontinuation of, uh, high, I guess, high stakes interviews. I guess this is too much for members of the class of 2029 uh, at Skidmore to handle. These would be students who are graduating from high school in the class of 2025. What have we done to a generation of students that they can't actually talk to someone representing a college or university in a, an interview? I don't know what we've done. I think that's an embarrassment to society generally. But Skidmore seems to be all on board because this is what they have announced. Quote, as you may know, we've discontinued interviews for the class of 2029 and beyond. What does this mean moving forward? Low stakes stress engagement opportunities. So again, low stakes, low stress. No one wants to stress you out. If you're a member of the high school class of 2025 or later at Skidmore, quote, the most valuable aspect of the interview was helping students understand and connect with Skidmore. In that spirit, we will endeavor to meet students where they are by offering virtual student chats that highlight personal insights without the stressful evaluative aspect of an interview. Again, I don't know exactly what we have done uh, that makes us proud of the fact that students at 18, 17 years old would be so petrified to engage in an evaluative interview. But I don't think as a society we should be proud of it. Uh, but again, Skidmore is all on board with the idea that Obviously, there are test optional. Obviously, there's a school that don't doesn't require any ex, uh, extra essays, supplemental essays, and they're also a school that has no space to upload a full fledged extracurricular resume to its supplement. It's a very bare bones supplement. In many ways, I would actually liken Skidmore to be sort of like the liberal arts version of Northeastern, at least as it relates to its application, which basically asks nothing more of students other than to 
uh, complete a few questions and pay the bill of the application fee to Skidmore. And uh, Skidmore has really gotten a huge number of applications in recent years. Uh, and uh, for a class that's basically less than 800 entering students, they get 12,000 applications a year now. And it's no accident because they are they are a safe space for individuals who don't want to be stressed or do any extra work in order to go to Saratoga Springs for college or maybe elsewhere that they may be cobbling together a little list based off of schools that don't require any extra work on their supplements. But again, Skidmore has discontinued its evaluative interview process, and they're framing it as a win-win for everyone. But I don't think it's a win-win personally. I'm entitled to that opinion. Skidmore's entitled to its opinion. But I think it would be lovely that uh, students who are able to go to college are able to sit in an evaluative interview because it shows that they're able to communicate effectively at the college level, maturely. You know, I always say, as you know from watching my videos, that one's communication skills are a window into one's critical thinking skills. So if students aren't asked to do these things, my question back to any college that is lowering the bar for admission would be, uh, are these students really college ready, at least in the traditional sense of what was college ready in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s? I mean, my argument would be absolutely not. But I think Skidmore's argument would be we want to increase the number of people applying, and we're in business. And as a result, they want to appeal to a particular segment of the market, which would be the segment of the market that wants to not be stressed or do any extra work to get into college. Bolstered virtual programming. We've increased the opportunities for lower stakes interactions and engagement and have dovetailed our programming with virtual information sessions most Tuesdays at 7 p.m. followed by a themed Ask Me Anything student chats most Thursdays at 7 p.m. In addition to these efforts, we are hosting and recording Skidmore Success Series select dates throughout the summer and fall featuring simple and useful content for students searching for and applying to colleges. Well, that's lovely. But again, it's also simple and stress-free. And also, there's Creative ThoughtWorks. This September, we will launch a monthly series known as Creative ThoughtWorks, showcasing our multifaceted alumni, faculty, and current students who demonstrate the impact of creative thought at Skidmore. After their enriching Skidmore experiences, our alumni go on to run Fortune 500 companies, create and perform art, launch startups, solve the world's most complex problems, serve their communities, and much more. This series will highlight these inspiring individuals and their stories, emphasizing the endless opportunities possible with a Skidmore education. Uh, Skidmore goes on to note that application requirements uh, include as follows. Many of our application requirements remain the same. Students and their families can rest assured that Skidmore remains, it's like a dream. You can just rest your way through the whole process. Uh, Skidmore remains steadfast in our work to reduce barriers in the application process. Students can find all application checklist items and deadlines in one transparent grid on our website. They remain test optional at Skidmore. Skidmore remains consistent in our commitment to being a test-optional institution or test-optional policy. Ca campus research supports our ability to admit and enroll students who thrive without test scores. We will continue to transparently report our mid-50% of those who submit scores. About 60% of applicants and enrolling students applied without test scores, though. So what that middle 50% really means is just a marketing ploy when 60% of students um, are enrolling or coming in without test scores. But in any case... No extra essays. Again, as I mentioned, that's sort of the Northeastern approach, which, uh, you know, they tested one cycle for about a month or two not uh, doing that, but then they pulled it back at Northeastern. But again, Skidmore has taken the approach of uh, basically requiring no additional writing, which can be burdensome, burdensome, and therefore we require no extra essays. School counselor letters of recommendation are not even required. They remain optional. Art, music, and dance portfolio submission. This year, portfolios will be submitted via the Skidmore application portal, enabling a free and seamless experience for students that better allows us to facilitate faculty review. So that sounds like they're getting rid of maybe slide room. Um, deposit waivers. Skidmore, for those people who don't feel like they can pay, they can fully waive the enrollment deposit for students with significant financial need. 
And of course, financial aid applicants do not need to submit a FAFSA to be considered for a Skidmore grant. And we only require the CSS profile at the time of application. Since the FAFSA is required only to apply for federal aid and can be completed after students have been accepted, each student, each admitted student receives their financial aid offer the same day as their letter of admission. Well, that is nice. That is nice. Uh, so they end the, uh, the, the note by just reemphasizing the fact that we have continue to reemphasize that we remain steadfast in our ongoing commitment to fostering diversity within our community. We're pleased that in a year of such uncertainty, we're able to enroll an incredibly talented, strong, and diverse class of students. We will continue the dialogue and share more information about outcomes with you this fall when we send out our profile. So again, all colleges right now are not willing or able really to share the demographics of their fall uh, 2024 and during class. This is the class of 2028 at these institutions. Uh, they're, they're framing it under the fact that, you know, affirmative action is preventing them from knowing all this information or keep, you know, keeping it close to the vest until the cycle is really done and the census is performed in September. And maybe that is the case. We will see uh, how demographics may have changed over at Skidmore as a result of the affirmative action rulings in the United States. But the overall framing, like I said, is basically along the lines of there's so much uncertainty in the world. It's been an extraordinary challenging year, says Skidmore in their note to counselors. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure in what they're referring to. I mean, I, yes, it's been a very tough year in terms of FAFSA. Uh, FAFSA was a mess, um, and that caused a lot of stress for students, families, and counselors. For sure, that is correct. But... You know, you got to roll with the punches. There have been years where the Common App completely broke down in August and September. Those were stressful years too. But again, Skidmore is very sensitive to the fact that in in tough times, they just need to make it as stress-free as possible for everyone. So maybe in a few years, you won't even need a high school diploma to go to Skidmore. I have no idea. Uh, maybe you don't need to speak English fluently. Maybe you don't know how to do uh, basic arithmetic in a few years at Skidmore. I don't know what the future holds at Skidmore other than to say they want their application numbers to remain steady or increase. Uh, so congratulations to Skidmore on lowering the bar yet again for uh, what it takes in order to be considered fully for admission to that lovely college in Saratoga Springs, New York. Now, if you're interested in getting into Skidmore and maybe you've already applied or maybe you're about to apply and you wanna make sure that your application is as strong as possible, I do recommend that you seriously consider getting my pre-read. What is my pre-read, you ask? Well, my pre-read is going to be your best friend as you consider what I think about whether or not uh, your application is in the shape it needs to be in to best position you for admission. When you finished your common app and you want to know if it's as strong as possible and whether or not in its current condition, your chances of admission are impressive, inconclusive, or inadequate, in this case to Skidmore, you want my pre-read. Getting my pre-read now means having me review your entire application just like an admissions officer or admissions committee will review it later and receiving by email no later than the time you reserve on my website, which in this case is mypreread.com. A comprehensive report highlighting what's working and what's not on your full common app and one common app supplement. Again, in this case, Skidmore. But as I just indicated, the Skidmore supplement's not much. Uh, there's no additional writing, basically. So ba basically, that, that's going to be almost inconsequential to your chances of admission as long as you complete the Skidmore supplement and indicate what you want to major in, et cetera. Talk a little bit more about some basic demographic information on there. There's no additional essay writing. There's no opportunity to upload a resume. But in the case of Skidmore, you would definitely want to show me the entire common app for sure because that's still going to have a huge impact on your chances of admission to Skidmore. Uh, and if you've yet to submit your common app, my pre-read may motivate you to make adjustments to it. Before your deadline, if you've already submitted your common app to Skidmore, then this will be more what I call uh, infotainment. It will be informational and entertaining to find out what Craig Meister, yours truly, believes uh, about your chances. Because my pre-read in that situation, if you've already submitted your application to Skidmore, will prepare you for what I deem to be your likely admissions outcome at Skidmore College. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel.
If you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process, go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. But again, for my pre-read, I'm, I'm making things simple and stress-free too, Skidmore. All students and families have to do is go to mypreread.com. They don't have to learn any longer URL in order to learn more about my pre-read. It's again, mypreread.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.